الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام علی سید الانبیاء والمرسلین وعلى آلہ واصحابہ اجمعین In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon each and every one of you. First of all, I want to wish all of you Ramadan Mubarak to you and your entire family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring all the comfort for us and all the blessings and the peace and the joy for us through the barakat, through the blessings of the month of Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Ramadan very special and very amazing and extraordinary for us. A Ramadan which changes our entire life. A Ramadan which brings the revolution in our life, subhanallah. This is my opportunity, my brother and sisters. This is your opportunity. Let this Ramadan be the best Ramadan of your life. And alhamdulillah, IBN, IBN is here. To help you to make this Ramadan the best Ramadan for you. Alhamdulillah. So that is why we're bringing the wonderful programs, Alhamdulillah, from morning till night, all the way throughout the day, Alhamdulillah. Special presentations, special programmings by our Imams and Mulanas and our brothers and sisters, those who, Alhamdulillah, working day and night on IBN just to share the guidance of Allah and share the guidance of Nabi Karim, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I welcome all of you to the beauties of Islam, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, for this program, for this beautiful program, for this beautiful IBN, for this beautiful Islam, for everything that we have is filled and surrounded with beauty, SubhanAllah. That is why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you see, even Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is beautiful and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, we know that Allahu Jameel wa Yuhibbul Jimal, Allah is beautiful and Allah loves what is beautiful as well. So we will try our level best that we bring the beautiful programs for you because you are beautiful people, amazing people, lovely people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide you in this dunya and as well as may Allah protect you in this dunya and as well as in the life of the hereafter, my brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah. So this is a special Ramadan transmission, Beauties of Islam, inshallah, which IBN bring for you every single year from last two, three years, alhamdulillah, between after the nine o'clock in the night and it is rerun as well in the daytime as well, my brothers and sisters. So inshallah, in this short 15 to 20 minutes, I will be discussing some very important issues that, that is relevant with us, with our daily life, inshallah, which can boost our iman, which can boost our faith, which can help us to be the better one. That's what we are here for. We are here to be the better one, my brother, in the sight of Allah and in the sight of the people of Allah, as long as this, that does not take us to the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are here to please the people as well, but not on the expense of displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this always, my brothers and sisters. So alhamdulillah, so inshallah, we will bring these programmings for you every single night throughout the month of Ramadan, inshallah. The minute you will come back from the Taraweeh Salat, don't forget to, uh, you know, put on the television, IBN TV 8, and you will have this program, inshallah, Aziz. And uh, in between, I will bring some guests uh, in the studio as well. And I will ch chat with them. I will ask some questions with them. I will discuss certain things with them, inshallah. So it's a full pack, full package, alhamdulillah. Complete package we have for you. And uh, throughout the day, from morning till night, inshallah. And especially in this program, Beauties of Islam. So I hope you will enjoy uh, these sessions of Beauties of Islam. And you will share this message uh, to others as well. And you will ask them to watch these programmings as well. And that will be the Dawat. Dawat Islam, that will be the Tabligh Islam, that will be the Isha'at Islam, that will be the, 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 the spread of Islam, inshallah, that will be the continuous blessing for you and for your family as well, my brothers and sisters. So, the first thing that I want to talk uh, today in today's program and the topic that I want to discuss, it is about reliance in Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is about trusting in Allah. It's very important, my brother, because our entire life depends in reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once we can understand the concept of tawakkul in Allah, once we can understand the, the concept of reliance in Allah, believe me, we will have no any problems in our life. You cannot imagine that how powerful Allah is subhanallah. We have that power, that strength, which is the power of Allah, which is the strength of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as the power of Allah we have, as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on our side, 
helping us, assisting us, giving us the shade, giving us the prote protection, there is nobody on the face of the earth who can even remove one hair from your body, my brother. Allah's power is with you, so tell me who is more powerful than Allah. Who has more strength and who has more capacity, who has more power than Allah's power, my brother. That is why when Ibrahim والسلام, when he was thrown in that fire, in that huge, massive, you cannot even imagine that how mighty that power, uh, that fire was, that nar, when he was being thrown in it, not as one hair of his body was burned. He was literally in the fire. Why it was not burned? Because he completely, you know, submitted himself in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, you know, asked and begged the help from one true God, from the heart, with conviction, with the presence of the mind, with the presence of the heart. This is what is lacking among us. We say we believe, believe in Allah. We say we rely in Allah. We make the dua uh, in our, after the salat. We say, Hasbi Allah. Allah is enough for us. Allah is suffice for us. This and that. But that does not come with our soul. That does not come from our heart. It's just a lip service. It's just a lips movement, my brother. Mind must be there whenever whatever you are uttering anything. And your heart must be there. Conviction must be there. Iqan must be there. Yaqeen must be there. There must be the certainty, my brother. There must be that, that solid yaqeen, that solid belief that Allah is in charge of everything. Allah is in charge. You know, one of the things that causes people to become distracted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is when they you know, stop trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they stop relying in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the minute you don't believe in Allah, when I say believe in Allah, you may be believing that Allah is your Lord, but the minute you say, okay, no, probably you need somebody else beside Allah, probably you started to drift away from the, from the mercy of Allah, from that reliance, so what will happen? The worries will come in your life. The stress will start to come in your life. The problems will start to enter into your life. The fear will start to enter in, in your life. And that is why, for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzunun. That the friends of Allah are those, indeed the friends of Allah are those that, that they, they don't have any fear of anything. They don't have any regret and they don't have any remorse. They, 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 don't, they, they don't regret about their past. Whatever happened in the past, they believe that that happened, that happened with the will of Allah, with the, with the decree of Allah. So they don't worry about it. They don't shed the tears about it. They don't say if and but. Why? Because they are the waliullah. They are the friends of Allah. They know that happened because Allah wanted it. So I'm here to surrender in the presence of Allah, to submit myself. So Allah knew that is better for me. That is why that happened. That is why that accident happened in my life. That is why I was not able to get that job. That is why I was not get, able to get that spouse or whatever it is. So they don't live in their past. They don't have any remorse. They don't have any regret. Whatever the action they did, they just focus in Allah's decisions. And they are pleased with Allah's decision. And they don't have any fear of what will happen if I will open this business, what is next day is bringing for me, what is next month is bringing for me, what is next year is bringing for me. No fear at all. <laughs> no fear at all. They have complete reliance on Allah. They make their efforts. They make their all the struggles that they're supposed to make. But after that, they don't worry. Nothing bothers them. If they open the business, if that business is bringing them the profit and the benefit, they are happy. And if that business is not bringing them any profit, is bringing only the loss, they're still happy. Subhan, they don't have any fear of anything because they have nothing to lose. What they have? They have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as you have Allah, you don't worry, you don't care. Nothing bothers you what you have and what you don't have because Allah is with you. Allah is with you, my brother. So we are here in the month of Ramadan to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the people, the friends of Allah are those that قُلْ لَنْ يُسِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا وَهُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ That they are those people that they say that, look, whatever is happening with me, it happens with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing befalls on me except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
except by the decree of Allah. Whatever is happening, it is decided, it is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not a leaf, not a one leaf can move, you know, that, that what they say, the tree leaf, without the permission of Allah. Without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can't breathe without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ Allah." That when you make any decision, when you make any some ahad, promise, when you want to do something, hasbi Allah, say Allah is enough for me. Allah will, Allah will look after me. Allah is my best guardian. Allah is my best protector, subhanallah. And inna Allah ala kulli shin qadir. Why not? Allah, why Allah is the best protector? Because Allah is, Allah is capable of doing every single thing. Allah is able to do every single thing. Because and if you will have that strong conscious of Allah, strong uh, uh, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that fear doesn't only mean that you are afraid of his wrath and his punishment. Fear means that you are, you are leaving the sins and you are adopting the good actions. That is what is mean taqwa actually. You are living your life by pleasing Allah, by obeying Allah, in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's, that's what is called taqwa actually. And... Once you have that, what will happen? No matter what, how, how narrow the road is, how narrow the road is, Allah will still open it for you. Allah will widen it for you. No matter how the dark the night is, no matter how the dark the tunnel is, there will be the light which will be provided and given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will open the makhraj for you, a door for you, an opening for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is that door which is totally sealed. Everybody is saying that no, you can't get this business going on. You can't get this child uh, obedient. You can't get this marriage going on. Nothing is going in your favor, no matter how much you try. People say these things, which will disappoint you eventually. But things that is uh, impossible by the people, that is very easy and very possible by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all about, my brother. You know, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, never mind if the whole world has shut, shut the doors for you. If the whole world is denying you, rejecting you, refuting you, refraining from you, and just running from you, that's okay. I will open the doors for you. You just need to stick with my teachings. You just need to cling with my teachings. You just follow me, please me. I will please you. Remember me, I will remember you. Assist my people, I will assist you. Thank my people, I will organize the people, those who will thank you, subhanallah. Feed my people, feed the poor, I will feed you. Clothe my people, I will clothe you. Shelter them, I will shelter you. Make the dua for them when they are in difficulties. I will, I will create the creation which will make the dua for you, subhanallah. That is how Allah works, my brother. That is how you just have to give something. You can't just like empty hand, you just made a little dua and you see what? Tawakkul is not something that, you know, believing in Allah and reliance in Allah is not something that, okay, when you did something, you, for example, you offer the salat and you did, did something which is pleasing Allah and now you are expecting that Allah will start to make the things smooth for you. Allah will start to make the things running for you. No, that, that we, we, we should not think like that. That is a wrong mindset actually. We should worship Allah, we should rely on Allah, we should depend on Allah because He is worthy of worship, He is worthy of love. We need Him. Allah do not need us. And you know what? The Sahaba Ikram, the companions of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa when they used to make the dua and when, dua, when their duas used to be answered, they used to feel very happy. And when their duas were not answered, they used to feel more happy. Why? Because before it was their pleasure and when their duas were not answered, that was the pleasure of Allah. You understanding or not? When their duas were answered because they wanted it to be answered, they wanted this thing, so Allah has fulfilled their pleasure. And now their duas are not answered means that whatever they were asking, they didn't get it. So now they are they're showing their more gratitude to Allah. They are more happy, they are more joyful because thou, now they know that whatever is happening in my life, it is with the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'm pleased with the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is how they used to think, my brother. So they never, you know, try to judge Allah or their iman that if I get this, then it means that Allah's relationship with me is very strong or something like that. No. How we should judge our iman that if I'm offering the salat or not. 
if I have the steadfastness in my sadqa zakat, in my fasting, in my relationship with Allah or not. If I'm forbidding myself from the minor sins and the major sins or not. It means that if I'm doing these things, it means that my, my iman is strong. Allah is pleased with me. That is why I'm on the right path. And if you are committing the sins and uh, you have every single thing on the face of the earth, it means that Allah is not pleased with you. That is not the criteria that you have the wealth. It means that the, Allah is pleased with you. That is not the only criteria. So probably there are pious people and the righteous people, mashallah, and, but they have the wealth as well. What is important? The bottom line, the point is this, that as long as you are doing that which is pleasing Allah, it means that Allah is pleased with you. Don't try to you know, assume and make these assumptions that if I will not have, uh, if I will have these difficulties, if I will have these problems, it means that Allah is angry with me. No. Don't think like that. Because the prophets, they were tested most and they were the beloved of Allah most. They were loved by Allah most, but they were the, those who were being placed and thrown in the difficulties most. And that is why Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah, you know, Ahabba abdan, idha ahabba abdan, Allah, idha ahabba abdan, ibtalahu. Abu Kamaqar sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start to love his servant, he afflicts them with the calamities, my brother. So rely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way the bird rely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way the bird, but what is the bird does, what the bird does every single morning, the bird leaves the nest. And when they leave the nest, their, their stomachs are empty. But when they re return to their nests, their stomachs are filled. So work for the provision. That is why Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave the example of the bird. That, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ That if you were to trust in Allah, if you were to rely on Allah, the way the birds rely and trust in Allah, so Allah will give you from there which where you don't even expect. So when the birds sleep in the night, when they take the rest in the night in the nest, they don't worry about the next day food. They know that they're going to make the effort and Allah, Allah will give them. They know that as long as we leave our nests, as long as we leave our comfortable places, we're going to get something. We're going to because Allah never wastes the efforts. Allah never wastes the efforts, my brother. Whatever the work you do, whatever the action you do, Allah will never waste it. This is the, this is the, this is the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as you work with sincerity, with ikhlas, and in a halal way, in a lawful way, in a legal way, my brother and sisters. So rely on Allah and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, tie your camel as well. So inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people, those who put their complete trust in Allah, because in Allah you hibbul mutawakkileen. Allah is the one who loves those who rely in him, those who trust in him, those who depend in him, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this quality through the barakat of the blessings of the month of Ramadan. So until next program, until next session of the beauties of Islam, this is me, Atif Majid, signing off. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah Hafiz. Mm -hmm.